Hello, Booktube. I'm once again coming to you uh, from the beautiful Arbor, Arnold Arboretum here uh, in Boston, one of my favorite nature places to be, a vast nature reserve uh, that was constructed over a century ago to be a place where you could come and just relax. I'm on the top of a, a piney little hill today, but we'll see all sides of the Arboretum as I continue to do this. Uh, and I'm here thinking about one of my favorite subjects to think about, <laughs> which is book reviewing. Uh, which is not just a passion of mine and my favorite kind of reading to do, but also my profession. And I'm thinking about it because of a video that was made by David over at his channel, The Poptimist. And I'll pause here and make sure, <laughs> make sure that you are all subscribed to him. I am assuming that you are. Uh, but if you're not, you're missing one of the best booktubers that we have, so you should go and subscribe. <laughs> uh, is, he only makes about one video a year. But they're well worth the wait. <laughs> and he recently did a video about uh, the departure of Michiku Kakutani from the New York Times as their sort of uh, uh, institutional book reviewer after 50 years or however long she'd been there. Uh, and also he broadened his discussion out to book reviewing just in general and what it's like and do we want negative book reviews and do, do we accede to it uh, professionalism. Uh, he referred, I think he was paraphrasing people who have referred to Kakutani as the platonic ideal of a book reviewer. <laughs> uh, and, oh god, <laughs> see, oh goodness, I want to give you more of a glimpse of this where I am. It's very pretty, very green, full of plants. <laughs> uh, and somewhere out there, Caleb is going, okay, I've met that one. Oh, I know what that one is. <laughs> anyway, uh, Kakutani had a reputation in Manhattan. I maintain mostly in Manhattan. Uh, for being able to make or break a book, being able to make or break an author. Uh, the the uh, verbal shorthand, again, I think mostly in Manhattan, was what did Kakutani think of it? Uh, and uh, that has people on the New York Times website and on all sorts of other comment forums and also on the comments to David's video talking about what, we, what we're talking about uh, when book reviewers come up. Are we all book reviewers if we write a review on Goodreads or on Amazon or that sort of thing? Uh, and the styles to take. David mentions that Kakutani never used the first person pronoun, for instance. And of course the implication there, the, the ghost hovering around that kind of comment. He's, other people have made that comment as well. The ghost is that a lot of reviewers do bring themselves in. And that opens up two different ideas of what a book review is. Are you objectively, objectively assessing the book? Or are you basically giving your response to it as one admittedly high-profile reader? Uh, and I thought that I would uh, that I would approach this this matter as I do so many matters, mathematically, <laughs> because as all of you will know, I am an adept of the higher maths. <laughs> uh, and in this case, we want to draw a quadratic equation of book reviews, <laughs> of book reviewing, of book reviewers. Uh, and we want the axes to be uh, the ones that were laid down originally 2,000 years ago by my old drinking, <laughs> my old drinking buddy, the Roman poet Horace, uh, who wrote the greatest work of literary criticism anyone's ever done. And in that, he said that the aim of literature was to instruct and entertain. And if we use those two things as our that's axes on our quadratic equation, we will come up with what we in the math world refer to as a Venn diagram. It's far too complicated for me to get into for the rest of you. <laughs> uh, but basically, uh, all book reviewers are going to fall on that quadratic equation somewhere. So you're going to get uh, book reviewers who give you more fun uh, and lean more towards the fun uh, quadrants of the quadratic equation. Uh, where they bring in mashups, or they use the first person pronoun, or they talk about topical current events as hooks for getting you in, or they make all sorts of uh, weird uh, contrasts and collaborations and whatnot in an attempt to uh, really entertain you. They are stressing the entertainment uh, side of the Horatian balance. And then on the other side of the, the other two quadrants of our quadratic equation, you have the critics who mainly are involved with finesse. They're going to talk about the history of the form of whatever it is they're reviewing. They're going to talk about the history of the, of the author that they're discussing. They're going to, and they're going to dig deep into the work. Uh, you're going to get a lot of information. Uh, and they are much more concerned with the finesse of the art form. Uh, and 
every book critic is going to fall somewhere in between the two theoretical limits. You will have, because you will have people, book critics who are all fun, or book, book critics who are without the fun, book critics who are all finesse or without the finesse. Uh, and the other axis is whether or not they're good or bad. And you might think that can't possibly be quantified. But in the math world, we quantify everything. <laughs> and you already know, you can already sense what a good critic or a bad critic is, right? If you read a book review of something and it tells you nothing and it leaves you none the wiser about the book, that review is bad. Regardless of what technique or where on the quadrant the reviewer is going, it, it, it doesn't matter. A, a one paragraph, all fun, review of a book in Entertainment Weekly versus a 5,000 word review, all finesse review of a book by Lionel Trilling in the New York Review of Books can be equally bad. They can both leave you totally nonplussed about the book. When the, the, uh, the essential answer, the essential question that everybody comes to a book review with, unless you're in the very small percentage of people who are just reading them as a form of writing, but the, the first question, the most popular question that anybody comes to a book review with is, should I read the book? I'm thinking about reading the book, I want some input. Uh, and therefore, <laughs> the first question that a good book reviewer should answer is that one. <laughs> and uh, the book reviewer who is all fun is not going to answer that question. And the book reviewer who is all finesse, believe it or not, I'm sure you've read some examples, they are also not going to answer the question. Uh, so it's the, there's also a question of good and bad. Uh, so, what you have to consider in the quadratic equation of book reviewers is, uh, are they more concerned with fun than with finesse, and are they good or bad? <laughs> and they will, they, you will be able to plot all of the book reviewers who, are ev who have ever applied their trade, for instance, in America since Washington Irving. You'll be able to plot all of them on this quadratic equation at some point or other. And then the, the, the decision will be up to you on what you want. <laughs> and as usual with a quadratic equation, most people will be roughly in the middle. They will know what they want their reviewer to verge a little towards, but they won't want all of one or totally without the other. <laughs> uh, and in, in that regard, it's, I think it's easy to see, if you look at, it, at, you look, if you look at her objectively, it's easy to, th to see that, uh, that Kakutani herself was a bad book reviewer. She was totally wedded to hot takes and to nonsense, and she also didn't read a lot of the books that she was reviewing. And it only took reading the book to see that. Uh, it's just that a lot of book critics aren't held to that standard. They, no one comes back to them and says, well, you know, that book critic said X, Y, and Z about a book, and they were wrong about that. <laughs> it's not just that they liked it and I didn't, or that I did and they didn't, it was that they were wrong about it. They, they said, for instance, that this character's internal struggle with mental illness formed the heart and soul of the book, and then you read the book and it's 10 pages out of 300. And thereby you know very uncharitably, but almost certainly accurately, that the book reviewer opened the book to that passage, didn't really have time or inclination to read the rest of it, and wrote it up that way. <laughs> Unlike most of the people who have eulogized Kakutani, I've actually read every book review that she wrote, and I've also read almost every book she reviewed in those reviews. That's a tough combination. Most of her readers didn't wouldn't be able to bring that to an assessment of her. And as one of those readers, I can tell you, she stank. She was terrible. The, the sooner we got her off the national stage of wielding any kind of influence over the book world, the better. She, uh, she didn't pay attention to what she was reading. She uh, hated authors. She gave them no fair shakes and would go after every book they wrote for their entire career. And there was nothing they could do about it, and it was the most powerful book critic in the world, so they had this weight on their shoulder the whole time and they knew it. No wonder so many authors hated her. It wasn't because they panned her books, it's because they knew she wasn't not going to. <laughs> uh, and I don't know, I don't know if anybody will rise to prominence in her place. There have been lots of jokes about that uh, in my own circle. Uh, I myself, as a book critic, lean much more towards the fun end of the spectrum than, than the finesse end as I think you would probably all guess. <laughs> I, uh, I wouldn't know a deep thought if it walked up to me at a bar mitzvah with one of those tags on that says, hello, my name is Deep Thought. <laughs> and yet, uh, some of my best friends <laughs> are, are all the way, or almost all the way over to the finesse end of the spectrum. Couldn't tell a joke, 
if you if you wrote it out for them, <laughs> but you'll never get a more thorough or intelligent, sensitive and wise uh, finessing of the reading of a book. Uh, so uh, it's really going to come down to you. It really comes down to the reader. I'll leave for another day uh, the horrifying element of the comments that I saw on the Times and in David's comments field about people who say, nah, professional book critics don't know what they're doing. They don't bring anything to the table that I don't bring. <laughs> I'll leave for another day addressing that. I'll say just for now, I'll let it suffice, that book reviewing is a kind of writing. It is a genre. And the people who say that book reviewers don't bring anything to the table that they don't bring themselves because they review a book every month or every year for Goodreads would never say, pick up the new Brandon Sanderson or an Isaac Asimov novel and say, well, you know, so they got a contract to write this, so what? I could do this. <laughs> they don't ever do that. Uh, and So I'm not really sure why book reviewing doesn't get the respect that other genres do. I have a suspicion that it's because everybody can do it. And usually when something is a skill that, uh, that everybody has, everybody discounts it. Same thing with reading. In, I used to, in college, first when I was in college, then I was teaching in college, I used to get so many howls of protests when I would say there are good readers and there are better readers. There are, and there are Olympic level readers. There are readers who are, in much, who are much better at reading than others. I used to get protests like crazy for that. And the reason why is because everybody can read. So everybody thinks that it's the same thing. Same thing with speaking. <laughs> uh, uh, but w that's the question, really, that uh, for now, I won't talk about the, 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 you know, the viability of book reviewing as a genre now. I'll just talk about w my thoughts on uh, the quadratic equation of book reviewing, which is you want to know, is the critic, is, it a, is this a book critic who's all fun or a book critic who's without the fun? Uh, are you talking about a book critic AF or a book critic WTF? <laughs> that's what you want to ask yourself. Uh, and... The last thought here is, once you've figured out what kind of a critic you're dealing with, what kind of reviewer you're reading, the ultimate litmus test of any book reviewer is uh, how often they are right for you. So if you follow a book reviewer and they give you lots of good recommendations or even bad recommendations that stick in your mind that you keep thinking about, then they're in the same part of the quadratic equation as you are. As a reader. <laughs> uh, and that's important. Once you find that, then you find a critic you can, that you can learn from and maybe who can learn from you. Uh, but uh, I just wanted to offer some of these mathematical thoughts uh, on, on, uh, on what book reviewing is and where Kakutani comes into the equation. Uh, I, I have to say, as a fellow professor, a fellow uh, practitioner of her profession, that I'm glad she's gone. Uh, she was, she was bad, and she was consistently bad, and she was bad in the highest profile place you possibly could be. And that's a bad combination. <laughs> so, uh, we have uh, much better book critics than, than her, much better book reviewers. Uh, and I would be willing to bet that if you think I'm being harsh with her, I'd be willing to bet that if you conducted the same experiment, the experiment that I have inadvertently conducted for all of her career, you would agree with me. If, if you go to the Kakutani archives or wherever, pick 15 of her reviews at random, spanning 30 years, and then go and find those 15 books and read them. Read her review first, and then go and read the book. I feel certain that when you were done with that horrifying experience, you would agree with me. Uh, but anyway, that's, uh, that's all for now. I'm going to go wander around here on the Pine Barrens and see, see what I can see. Uh, but I'll be back soon. <laughs> Thank you, BookTube.